How's it going everyone, Javita here with another hunter type video. This time we're going to be focusing on essentially what is a roadrunner hunter or a solo kind of stealth like hunter. So if you're familiar with my stealth gatherer video, uh, you'll probably immediately understand the basic premise of this build. But uh, basically, yeah, we're going to be a stealth gatherer, but instead of specializing into shovels and axes, we're specializing into sling bows. But I already have pre-filled out essentially what I consider the core of this build. And the main thing we're focusing on is control for the essentially the stealth modifier. That's going to allow us to get closer to creatures before they become aware of us and start wanting to attack you, or in this case, run away from you as far as the Roadrunners are concerned. Augment this effect even more, we're going to pick up the Shadow Effect Epic down below. That's going to, again, just make this an even more potent effect. But coming back up to the top, we also have the maximal power. So we have all the Sleembo epics uh, and mastery right here and here, uh, along with power, the bonus attribute to then top off all of these other attributes we're actually interested in. And of course, the damage epic down below under epic three, which is right here. So that's going to give us the maximum amount of di extra damage from skills that we can possibly get. So that's kind of the core of this build so to speak this also focuses on getting maximum luck because if you're going after those road runners you're probably after the road runner feathers which are pretty rare so you're going to want to maximize your chances of actually getting what you're after uh, this is going to be primarily kind of like a solo hunter i mean you can hunt for road runners in groups which is actually beneficial since each character will be able to loot each Roadrunner individually, uh, thereby increasing the odds of getting feathers, but it's just harder to get a group together to do just Roadrunners, I suppose. But let's move along. So I I was really kind of struggling to whether or not to include agility as a core attribute on this build. Uh, basically, I kind of consider it to be a core attribute. You don't necessarily have to fill it out, but the way I look at it is that you're going to be doing a lot of running around looking for roadrunners or even maybe hoppers for the thermal cores. Uh, so having extra movement speed is a definite plus. As far as zeal is concerned, having extra energy is kind of nice, but since you're going to be mostly looking for roadrunners, you're going to be doing a lot of running around, you won't necessarily need a whole lot of energy to do sustained firing. The whole goal of this build is that when you finally do find that roadrunner, hopefully you're going to hit it just once to kill it and then before it ever even actually sees you. So we won't really need just a whole lot of energy, but if you're going to be using consumables, you might pick it up just to make your buffs last a little bit longer. However, you don't really need any buffs. I suppose a well-fed buff would be particularly useful, but uh, is it really worth taking zeal to prolong the duration? That's kind of up to you. Certainly if you're going to use something like a speed brew to increase your movement speed even more than uh, zeal would be a good thing to have. Uh, vitality, that's basically optional. Uh, again, we're kind of like a sniper. We're not going to be doing a lot of heavy duty combat on this spec, so you don't necessarily need a whole lot of vitality, but it wouldn't exactly be a bad thing to have. Other than uh, you might consider the fact that you might be taking a fair bit of fall damage and things like that, and so having the minimal amount of HP can actually be useful just for the well-fed effect of being able to uh, regenerate your HP for you. If you have extra vitality, the, the well-fed regeneration is, isn't is really going to cut it. So coming down to masteries, of course we do have the Slingbow Mastery as we went over earlier. Uh, you might consider Grapple Mastery, however if you have the Guild buff or a nicely forged grapple, uh, you may not find that you really need it, but that extra grapple length and particularly the projectile speed can be quite handy. And if you're using fist weapons, then there's the added benefit there as well. Scrolling down to Epic 1, uh, the one thing I probably would recommend, this I guess really depends on your slingbows, is picking up the Charge Epic. 
uh, this will allow you to charge up your sling bow to do essentially double damage. So if you're trying to shoot a roadrunner and you don't have the best bow, or maybe it's like an elemental roadrunner with an exotic buff that gives it extra HP, this could be the difference between one-shotting it and having to shoot it multiple times in order to kill it. So it's not 100% necessary, but it would be a nice one to pick up. And then coming over to the health and energy epic, uh, it's kind of what we've already covered above. If you take extra health, that's going to interfere with your HP regeneration. Uh, if you're going with extra vitality above, then you might want to pick up the health epic. If you're picking up a bunch of zeal above, uh, I can't really see taking the energy epic. There just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of a benefit here. You're not going to be doing a lot of continuous firing ideally, so if you're going to pick up one of these, I would probably say the health epic. And of course, as we already mentioned, the stealth epic to help out your stealth to be able to get closer to those run runners. Uh, down in Endurance, you can take some of these if you want to, uh, particularly, you know, a stray creature might decide to attack you or you might decide to do a meteor while you're running around, so uh, extra armors can be nice. If you're going to take any of them, I would probably say take Kinetic Armor since that seems to be the most beneficial to me. Most impulse damage is pretty easy to avoid, so that kind of comes down to personal preference. It is nice to have, not exactly necessary. And then coming over here, I almost always like to take the Durability Drain Epic. This is going to make your tools last longer, and anything to make my tools last longer just means I have to gather less resources, make less coin, and forge less often. So uh, if at all possible, I generally try to take it. And then coming over to the Jump Distance Epic, this kind of goes along with having max agility. This is going to increase your mobility, which is you know, a good thing to do. <laughs> so uh, certainly if you don't mind grappling and you have a really nice grapple, then you might not really feel the need to take this, but it is a handy thing to have. Uh, another thing you might actually consider is picking up the Gathering Epic. Since you're going to be doing all that running around, you might decide to hit a few surface resources here and there, uh, and this will help you get just a little bit more uh, from that trouble, basically. And if you already have max luck, this will increase it beyond that, but it's also not going to make necessarily a night and day difference. So you don't exactly have to feel pressured to take this if you already have luck, but if you do have luck, then this is going to give you just a little bit more on top of that. And as far as regeneration skills, kind of like we've already covered above, you're not going to be doing a lot of continuous firing, so you don't exactly have to have the energy regeneration epic. It wouldn't be bad to have it. You might even decide to take the health regeneration epic, particularly if you are taking a little bit of extra HP. Between uh, this skill and the well-fed buff, that might actually be enough to kind of keep or help keep you topped off and avoid using potions. So this is probably one of the very few circumstances where I see the health regeneration epic of being a halfway decent option. But again, 25 HP per five seconds. Uh, if you have a decent sized health bar, it's gonna be a drop in the bucket. So it really just depends on how much vitality you're gonna be taking and how often you take fall damage, drown damage, etc. So scrolling down to exploration, naturally you're going to want whatever protection skills you're actually going to need. If you want to be able to go to all of the tier 6 planets and not have to worry about any of these, then you'll need 4 points into each one. Uh, naturally, if you're going to be going to a tier 7 world, you'll need 5 points in whatever protection that is. So that's upwards of 5 points in each of these, or you could just you know, temporarily steal a point and put it into the one that you need uh, and then just unlearn that later. It's kind of up to you, but there should be a decent amount of room in this build. As you can see, we've only spent 89 skill points, so we have, what, another 11 skill points to spend, and we pretty much got uh, the bare bones essentials, or at least what I feel are the essentials, 
Okay, so I got this filled out more or less how I would do it. I do have one point left unspent and I'm really kind of unsure what to do with it. You could put a little bit extra into vitality for some hit points. Uh, some dexterity would be kind of nice for the few times you're going to stop and hit the surface resources. I did take the gathering epic down below just to help out uh, gathering surface resources. Since you're going to be running around looking for runners, I feel like it's a nice kind of uh, double duty to also pick up maybe some surface resources you're interested in. You can certainly put this somewhere else. Uh, if you don't put it in the gathering epic, since we are taking some extra HP, it would be really kind of interesting to try out the health regeneration epic and see if that is enough to kind of keep you topped off even with the increased HP bar. Uh, in a perfect ideal world, you would have enough regeneration to not really have to or feel the need to use healing potions to keep your HP up. But if you take a modest amount of fall damage, you'll find that uh, yeah, you can get close to dying in a pretty quick amount of time. Another interesting option is that this is such a very specialized build, you could actually say like if you have a preferred location to farm run runners, you could take the protections only for that world and potentially salvage 8 points right here. That would allow you to take um, an extra almost 2 epics. So what, we could pick up the regeneration epic and we could find one more point, uh, we could maybe even steal a point from Agility and we could take an extra epic. I'm honestly not sure which one it would be, but we could pick up some extra armor to be able to t um, solo meteors a little bit more easily, uh, even some extra uh, vitality for hit points, or even the, the zeal for food buffs and whatnot. So. Or even pick up some extra grapple mastery because, uh, yeah, that projectile speed is pretty nice. But anyway, I think that covers this video pretty well. As far as the gear side of things, naturally you're going to want some kind of slingbow that has extra damage, projectile speed, and maybe even range forged onto it. Basically, kind of like a sniper rifle. And just to give an example of that, here's a slingbow that I made. It's got an extra 830 damage on it, 30 meters projectile speed, as well as reduced weight, which just helps it to fly straighter, as well as plus 24 meters max range. So basically, if I can see something, I can hit it with this slingbow. And also having slingbow augments can help it do just that much more damage, uh, not to mention the charging epic. So pretty much, unless it's a really, like, say elemental roadrunner with the extra hp buff on it uh, you're probably going to one shot your roadrunner and i suppose if you wanted to go exceptionally overkill you could even drink a strength brew but uh, i truly i feel like that would be a little bit overkill uh, another interesting option is that you can bring a sling bow that has the slow debuff forged onto it. You can target that debuff with the special gum and that will reduce the Roadrunner's movement speed. I haven't personally tried this out, but I've heard of others using this, and if it's a strong enough debuff, it can make it to where you can actually run faster than the Roadrunner. So at that point, it honestly doesn't matter whether or not uh, you can one-shot them if you can just slow them down to the point that you can keep them within range. So, uh, kind of a, an interesting other way to go about it. The, the only issue with that particular method is that if you're buying your own slingbows, it might be a little bit difficult to find somebody that is selling such a slingbow since uh, most shops seem to focus on the damaged slingbows. If you're forging your own slingbows, then you'll have the fun of trying to actually get that particular boon because, yeah, there's like four or five special <laughs> effects for slingbows, like the shotgun, bleed effect, reduced damage, and uh, then the, the slowing debuff. And there might even be another one I'm not thinking about, but it can be a little bit annoying with all the RNG to try to get the one you're actually interested in. But I think that will cover this video pretty nicely. This was Javita, thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more like this, and if there's anything you didn't like, please let me know down below. Also, if you like my channel want to get cool perks, check out my Patreon page. Until next time, peace.